Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's a video you've been waiting to see. I've come to see Michelle, the owl lady, and who's that over there? Weebles! Weebles! That, ladies and gentlemen, that stunning animal is Weebles. Now, he, this is the second take. He's actually <laughs> asked me to do several because every time we have to do a take, he gets to eat a leg. <laughs> Don't you? That's handy. And he's tame. I can stroke him, can't I? You can. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. How many people have done that? I'm stroking an owl. Now, the reason I can do this is part of the reason you're doing what you're doing, isn't it? Yes. So all of my owls have been hand re he reared from three to four weeks old. So they're very, very tame. They're very, very friendly and uh, I do animal assisted therapy with them. Excellent. So how, how, do they, how do you give therapy with an owl? So it's all about spending time in nature, um, connecting with the animal, being present, um, self-calming techniques, mindfulness techniques, and just the joy, you know, the joy that people get from just being with the animals, touching them. We often have lots of criers when we're out and about because mm. people are just so overwhelmed by being able to be so close to them. I have to say, I, I'm, I'm just stood here, this close, I met Marmite with yeah. you in town the other day, to be this close to an owl, because you, you see these guys at the fairs and they've got the birds on the little things on the ground and they all look very ferocious and they, you have to stand back, but to actually come in as close as this to these gorgeous, gorgeous creatures, I mean, who couldn't love an owl? So do you find people respond to these really well? Yes, they do. Um, people just open up. Um, had lots of people who have had quite griefy moments mm -hmm. when we've been out with the owls and they just sit with the owls and all their emotion comes out and they just feel so much better. Everybody smiles, you know, the amount of joy. I mean, we take them for walks quite regularly. Yeah, well, I met um, you in Glastonbury yeah. one, just yeah. randomly. I walked out <laughs> the cafe and there's a lady sitting with an owl on her leg. As you do. Well, there you go. That's absolutely brilliant. I think this is fantastic. And to get this close to an owl, I mean, oh, it's amazing. You just don't see it. And we've got how many more in the shed over there? Six more. Over there is the, is the uh, shed, which contains the rest of the owls. We're gonna go in there in a minute and meet them all. It's beautifully built. I love the way you've used the bark on the end of those. Right. And that bark was from Glastonbury Festival. Yeah, they were going to use it for firewood, but because it was so hot, they had so much left over, so they let me have it. What an excellent thing. And how long did it take to build that? We started it in April, mm -hmm. um, and we moved the birds in in August. So it was a long time. I had a builder who did the main frame, and then the rest of it, me and Glenn basically have done ourselves. So I've learned a lot about DIY. Wow. Should we go and have a look yeah. and meet the rest of the... Oh, what's, inmates is the wrong word. <laughs> what's the word we should use for this? A uh, parliament. We should go... Yes, of course, it's a parliament. Here's one I bet you don't know. Do you know what the collective noun for cats is? Oh. Yeah, you would no. think everybody would know that, wouldn't you? No. They don't. What is it? And the answer is clowder. C-L-O-W-D-E-R. Wow. It's a clowder. Nobody knows that. Wow. I bet there's more IQ in this parliament than the other <laughs> one up in Westminster put together. Now, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, I just would want to point out that we are well aware of the avian flu situation and um, we have oh. um, uh, a, a foot bath that you step in on the way through and there's also hand sanitizer, which I'm going to use. Now, one thing you will hear in here is the birds. If we just stand quietly for a minute. <laughs> now, what we're going to do is we're going to meet all the birds. This one's come home now. Because as you can also see, each bird has a really nice large area to live in. Plenty of places to perch, plenty of places to walk around. They're really well, and they've got a little box there that they can live in, because all owls like to live up in a little box, don't they? Now this one down here is gorgeous. I'm not going to go in too close, because he's new. Cookie Monster. There we go, there's Cookie Monster. Now Cookie Monster's new, so we're not going to go too close to him. But he's a stunning, he's going to be your biggest bird, isn't he? Yeah. She. 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 Of course it's she. Oh, we're definitely not going in close. Right, I'll get... Um... Come on then. Come on then. So, here's another one. Hello. How so are this, you? This is Loki. She's an African spotted eagle owl. She looks uh, like she wants to kill me. 
people do say that her nickname is the demon apparently oh, gorgeous hello baby you're beautiful uh, but she aren't you? uh female owls tend to be a little bit more sassy uh -huh. so um a bit like humans really yeah she, she's a little bit sassy but she's not hurting me she's just she's having a nibble a bijou nibble there. But I suppose if they wanted to chomp down, they could do some damage. Yeah, these guys. It's, it's the talons you have to be careful more, more than anything, more than their beak. Really? Um, yep, so with the big one, Cookie Monster, she could literally put her talon in the spine and disable uh, a large animal if they Whoa, wanted to. That's impressive, isn't it? Hello, lady. And this lady's name is? Loki. Loki. God of mischief, because we weren't sure what sex she was when she first came. Uh huh. But she came to me because my friend rescues uh, birds and they had some parent bred owls and they had babies and they tried to kill all the babies. So they... This is so unusual, like, like Marmite we'll yeah. meet later. Marmite is, is a black, He's a black barn, barn owl. owl and so he would have been Yeah, killed. he was born in, in, in the wild. Oh, someone back up. You can touch her but can she I might touch bite her? you. It's okay, I don't mind a little, a bijou nibblet. Hello. Hello, baby. Really? Oh, you're looking straight. They look right into you, don't they? <laughs> right in and out the other side. What a beautiful, beautiful bird. I, I, I think these are my favourite birds of prey. I mean, they're, they're just something. I think it's the cat eyes that does yeah. it. They're not, they're not like birds, are they? With those little round black yeah. holes. These are. You can see a cat. Look at you. <laughs> wow. You can see oh. she's not hurting me. No, she's no, no, she's no, no, just no. telling me. Really? I know some people might be a bit nervous around birds. How, how do you deal with that? Um, well, if they're nervous, then... They probably wouldn't they come. Wouldn't. No. But as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, there's no reason to be nervous around these little chaps at, and chapesses <laughs> at all. Yes. Can they really turn their heads? 280 degrees. 280 degrees. Blimey, that's impressive. And that's it? because their eyes are set in their head. Yes, so they have so to. So they have to look. Ooh. Now, somebody did tell me um, when I said I'd stroked an owl, that's unusual because they normally have an oil in their feathers that striking no, so, destroys? No, so um, owls don't have any oil in their feathers at all. Hawks do, birds Hawk. of prey, falcons, they do. So that's why a lot of owls will die in the wild because they've got no waterproofing. So oh. barn owls in particular like to land in slurry pits yeah. and they basically become sodden with water, whereas a, a, a hawk might be able to swim, yeah. but an owl wouldn't and they would drown. Oh, no. And that's the reason why they are such silent hunters, yes. because they've got no, no oil. But obviously I'm, that has that downside as well. I know, I, I was cycling along a road on the levels and uh, I was. I just saw this bird go across my head, probably ten feet above me, flying as if it was using the straight lane as a navigation. Mm. It got probably about seventy yards in front, and it just did a left-hand turn without even stopping. Went dump, dump, <laughs> and as it turned left, it looked back at me, and I just to say, I saw you. Yeah. <laughs> They're incredible animals, and until I met you, that was my closest encounter with them. Right. Well, you you you've been a star. Should we go and meet somebody All else right. now? Who should we get? So, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jester. Hello, Jester. Aren't you just stunning? I don't like to come in too quickly. No, so Chester is one of my rescues. Okay. He was abused and abandoned, um, but he was he, he was basically very loved and cared for for the first couple of months of his life. And then, it wore um, off. And then no, then he was sold to somebody. Um, so the first six months he attacked me. Mm -hmm. um, I used to have to wash his aviary with a washing basket over my head to stop him attacking me. Um, I've had him for nearly two years now. I do free fly him, uh -huh. but he is not a touchy feely owl so like my others. One. No, he will bite me. Mm -hmm. um, but Ooh. he he has got a quality of life now, Good. and I mean eagle owls will live up to 30, 40 years in captivity. So we're hoping at one point that he will turn he's, into a nice owl. <laughs> he's got his I'm going to eat you for dinner face on at the yeah. moment, hasn't he? Aren't you stunning? But his eyes are just amazing. They are incredible. Look at those eyes, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. So that's look part of the work that I do here is I will rescue and rehabilitate. Wow, look at that. I mean, I'm just lost for words. <laughs> These things are so beautiful. And you, oh, I like you. Oh, and I like the fact you're unpredictable as well. I do like that. <laughs> I do like that. Ooh. 
They do. They look at you like your lunch, don't they? They do. So tell me, talk me through. I'm, I'm, um, I've come to you. Maybe I'm feeling a bit stressy or something, and I want to, to work with the animals. And yep. you're, what would we do? How would that right, work? So Obviously, you wouldn't introduce him no, into the No, no, no. First of all, I'd give you a, um, a safety talk about how to handle the owls. Mm -hmm. uh, then if you're comfortable, you would have the owls on you. Really? And, yeah, so you'd have, you'd have him on the glove. You would maybe go for a walk or just sit down. And then we'll just let you have a time to settle in, think about your breathing. Um, each person obviously is individual, why they come and what reasons they come for. Mm -hmm. But generally, um, if it was for anxiety or depression, say, we just teach you to connect back into yourself with the owl, you know, being present in that moment. Because when you're in a, when you're in a dark place, you can't make very good decisions no. so when you can be lifted you can make better decisions and you can problem solve better so Absolutely. it's all about just taking time for yourself reconnecting and of course for a lot of people these are totem animals aren't they the yeah owls. they are a lot of people that um, you can be spiritually activated by owls mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well we better let them put you back just because uh, you got lots to do haven't you mm -hmm. like eat things and kill things <laughs> and you're wonderful and i'm so sad that he's had such a you know, until he came to you. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to meet the gorgeous creature that is Twiggy. Look at that face. Hello, baby. Aren't you beautiful? Hello. So she's a tawny owl. Yep, so she's a tawny. Oh. We've got a couple. She's another female, so she's a little bit bolshy. She's another nibbler. Another nibbler. Hello. The females tend to be nibblers, in my experience. OK. The uh, boy owls tend to be a lot more loyal. Yeah, it's like you to cats, isn't it? It's the same yeah, thing. Yeah. I've got a cat, a male and a female cat. The male cat just wants stroking all the time. He's like Odie from Garfield. <laughs> but the female cat, if she wants to know you, she's there in your face. Yeah. If she doesn't, all you see is the pencil sharpener. <laughs> That's all you see. I'll tell you what, I wonder what my cats would make of an owl. Hey cats, I've brought a new friend for you to play with. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to be really, really, really um, privileged here because I'm going to hold Lung Twiggy here on my hand. I've never held a bird of prey before in my life. So I am so looking forward to this. Plus, it's going to be the, um, we're going to make this the picture for the video. So you'll see it. You are gorgeous. And you know it, don't you? You've got, see her eyes, they're all black. They're, they're... Yeah, so the owls with the black eyes tend to hunt at night. So on. so with the orange eyes, I think they hunt at day, in the day, and with yellow eyes, they hunt at night and day. Much bigger, yep. light opening. Wow. Beautiful. And how long have you had Twiggy? Twiggy I've had for two and a half years. So is she young? Uh, yeah, so she, she's, she's about two and a half. You're so, gorgeous. Fantastic. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this I'm told is Knickknacks, the star of the show. Knickknacks, look at you, baby. Okay. Is this the smallest owl you can get? Um, no, he's not. But what if I if I get you? There we go. Oh, he's got a little sweet spot. Just oh, look at that. Oh, look now. There's an owl who likes being stroked. Just in there. Wow. So this is from India, from the Himalayas? From the Himalayas, yep. So um, he was bred in captivity. Um, Can I see that, ladies and gentlemen? That's how you, you get to an owl. Oh, he's having a nibble. Look. Hello, have a nibble. Just in there. Oh, look at you. So Nick Nax is very, uh, well, he's, he's less intimidating than all the owls. So I, I would normally start with him if people were having a handling yeah. uh, experience. They would start with Nick Nax. I can see why. Yeah. Look at you, you're always like a cat. Yep, he... Does he purr? <laughs> he just makes some interesting sounds, doesn't he? Yeah. There oh, we go. Beautiful. You want to nibble if you want. You want to do that. That's what you do it, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, Definitely got that little sweet spot. Oh, wow, look at that, ladies and gentlemen. If that is not the cutest <laughs> thing you've ever seen in your life, I just do not know what is. Look at that. Stroke my head, please. Now and forever. Wow, Nick Nats, you little star. <laughs> so this is one you'd start people off to get them used to? Yep, so get used, because he's less intimidating, he's nice and light, 
um, and people can just get used to them and they build some confidence and then they can go up and try all the different owls. Just well rotten, aren't you? I can see that. Wow. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is probably the tamest, coolest owl you're ever going to meet. Nick that's his star. And when he's not like that, when he's upright, he has got the cutest little face, hasn't he? Look at you. Wow, you've got a face anybody could love, haven't you? He's thinking, you stop stroking me, I'm going to eat you now. <laughs> but it's so he a... does get the most attention if we go out, I can he, imagine. he gets the most. I can imagine. Like you say, he's small, you're not going to get your finger eaten by him and he's, he's dead cute. Oh my word. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, those of you who saw my short advertising this video have already met this character. This is the wonderful Marmite. Hello Marmite, aren't you gorgeous? Now tell us about Marmite, because he's a bit different, isn't he? Yeah, so Marmite is a black barn owl. Yeah. Uh, they, they, are only cat, they are only bred in captivity. You won't see these in the wild very often. Um, it's the opposite to albino. Mm -hmm. So it's a one in a million chance of it happening in the wild. Mm -hmm. And normally the parents would kill them if they had a black barn owl, because it's not, like the normal. It. not the yeah, normal. Yeah, it's not the normal. Wow. So you are a bit unique, young Marmite. And he again is very calm, loves a cuddle. He does, doesn't he? They all do, except the big one. <laughs> That's incredible. Because people think animals in the wild, they, they, they're not, they don't have this side to them, do they? They don't realise. It's absolutely fantastic. I mean, he's actually nestling in against you. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Complete harmony. So to work with owls, they, they need to be imprinted on you. So yeah. you normally uh, bring them up from the age of three weeks onwards mm -hmm. uh, and they get very used to you and to humans. But we, I've done a lot of socialisation with them. We're always walking them around, meeting lots of things, meeting different animals, mm. you know, in traffic. It, it takes quite a lot of work for them to be like they are. Mm. And so I noticed earlier on we saw one eating the leg. Was that a chicken leg? Yep, so I buy frozen day old chicks. Yeah. Um, they eat mice. We bought some hamsters and some rats today. <laughs> um, obviously that's what they eat. You know? Yeah, I know some people get a bit squeamish about that. I know somebody used to keep snakes and they used to get things called pinkies. Which yep. Like the furless mice. baby mice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, these guys would eat that in the wild, yep. so don't be squeamish about it, it's no. natural. You know, so you wouldn't expect us to go and eat worms, mm -hmm. so why should we expect them to eat bacon and eggs? It's just not the way it works. So apart from the, the big one who's not quite tame yet, that's all of them we've met now. Yeah, you've met all of them now, yeah. Wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed meeting these wonderful people. I'll put links in the description if you feel you'd like to come and meet these birds. Uh, and Michelle, you travel to people, don't you? Yeah, I will work travel, here. yep. Don't so, work here. So we'll, the owls will come to you. So I can do owl experiences, uh, school visits, um, and one-to-one -one therapy. And I will be starting some small um, children groups where they can go out, walk with an owl in the nature. And that's a six weeks program. So it's very structured and they learn all sorts of things that will help them deal with life. And have a, 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 an appreciation for wildlife, which is so important in this day and age where people think milk, milk comes from supermarkets. We are so disconnected from nature and, and what goes on around us. And this, bringing something that's normally so far away and distant, really brings that home. And I think the work you're doing is fantastic and I um, admire you for thank it. Thank you. Another thing we, we've just started doing as well is our meditations what they meditate or we so, do. So you can get an exclusive uh, meditation with the owl so they're in the room, you get to connect, it's a guided owl meditation and then you get to meet and greet the owls afterwards. So, Marmite, after me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Worth a try, wasn't it? Well, thank you so much for inviting me here today and letting us show the ladies and gentlemen your wonderful collection of beautiful, beautiful birds. You're and as I say, if you want to come and meet them, I will put Michelle's details in the link below. Please do come along because I tell you what, just meeting these birds today, I feel really lovely <laughs> and calm. It's, it's been a wonderful experience to meet them and come here to this secret location. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank Michelle. You. Thank you, Marmite and all your buddies. Goodbye, Marmite. And until we see you on the next video, this is me saying goodbye to you.